Hi all. Today we're looking at how to fix a jet wash. Now pretty much all these are, uh, are, are the same in terms of their basic principles and mostly this should help you with almost any. Um, this is a little baby partner job. Now to be fair, Karcher, same thing. I mean even this, this even goes up and covers on the basic principles, even the engine driven jobbies. Okay, now <clears throat> the basic rules. Um, if you're gonna take it apart, make sure it's unplugged. Um, don't be fiddling with live electrics, you'll kill yourself. And bear in mind the pressures that these things can produce can inject water um, under your skin and into your bloodstream. So again, be very careful in what you're doing. But this is the basics, this is not the, the you know, this is not you know your factory spec way of doing it, but these are the common faults that can cause you a problem and can easily be fixed. Okay, to slow this video down, what I've done is I've taken it apart. You obviously don't need to know that bit. And here are the basics of a jet wash. Right. So what have we got? <clears throat> we've got an air-cooled motor. We've got a gearbox. We've got pistons. And we've got a non-return manifold. So, how does it work? This spins. It reduces its spin with usually a gearbox in here. That then rotates this elliptical plate here, which basically hammers on these, goes pushes, 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 pushes like that, which pumps these pistons here, pumps these pistons down into these chambers. That pressurized water is sent up through each one of these non-return valves, which live in here, and it is then sent through and out the main pressure line. Okay, so what can go wrong? Right, let's start at the very beginning, okay? You switch your jet wash on and it does nothing. Right, fuse, the normal stuff, wiring, it's all very basic. It's, it's a switch, a start capacitor. There's no intricate gubbins in these at all. It is literally power in, um, power in to the switch through a capacitor and off you go. So, um, if it's making no noise whatsoever, um, check your power, the, the normal stuff, that's that's the you know the easy bit, pretty much if you're in this far, you know that stuff. Okay, if it's sitting there and all it does is it hums, all it does is it does nothing, just this low hum, or if it just blows the fuse. Quite often what that is, is the start capacitor, and that's this boy. What this actually does, I have no idea, but all I know is that they won't run without them. Um, and the signs that it's gone is that your machine sits there and just makes a humming noise. Now, don't get me wrong, it might have seized up here in the gearbox. So what you do is you get yourself something and you just make sure on the fan that you can, that it turns freely, that the motor is actually turning freely and it's not locked up. If it has and it's humming, have a go changing one of those. They're not expensive. You don't have to um, you don't have to wire them in a certain way round or anything. It's just two wires that just go straight in, one and two like that. I mean, yeah, if you want to put them around the same way, fine. Um, <clears throat> and what you do is you just take the specs off it. Now it's that it's that UF number you're looking for. See, that's twenty five UF plus or minus five. Obviously, the voltage is important too, but that's your your main reading of how powerful this thing is. <clears throat> Try swapping that out. Easy to get, RS components, eBay, things like that. Or, um, I don't actually have one big enough to compare with this one. This is a seven. Um, but if you can find something on something else that's close, um, have a go. I mean, it doesn't seem too critical. I mean, I've used sevens where it should be a 13. I don't know what they do. I suggest standing back while you do it, if you see what I mean. Um, but um, it doesn't ever seem to me that that 25 or that size is actually super critical. Um, that is a beast, however, so, but that is a very strong motor. Okay, so let's assume your machine runs but produces no pressure. The common problem here is that muck gets into the non-return valves. And by the way, you, you may be thinking, oh God, all these things are disposable. If you've got a decent maker cartridge or something like that, they're actually not. Um, you can get rebuild kit for the, kits for these really easily. You can get non-return valves, you can get loads of bits. So anyway. What are you looking for? These have almost invariably got three pistons, which 
which means they have three non-return bars. That's the same whether it's this rotary type with a swash plate or the type that's got a little crankshaft in it where everything is sort of laid the other way. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Find your non-return valves and undo them. Now, under these non-return valves, under these non-return valve caps, there are little baby non-return valves. Now, <clears throat> quite often, it's easier to do than this, quite often um, you can literally just see from in here any bits of crap that are stuck in them. Unfortunately, these don't often come out all that easily, so really, what you're often doing is you're destroying them, taking them out. So if you're going to do this, be aware that you may need a new set to put back in. But quite often what happens is that muck gets stuck in these non-return valves. And then what's happening, I'll just try and get the seat out if I can. Um, oh, it's difficult, you know what I'm like, don't have a tripod. Not very professional at this stuff. Anyway, what we've got is we've got, and all it is is this, look. Spring, mushroom or piston, and a seat. And all that's happening is that the pressure is squeezing up, the spring's obviously on top of that there. The pressure is squeezing up, lifting that, so allowing the water through, and then when the piston has stopped pushing the water through, that's springing back down, so the water is then locked up in the outwards sort of um, port rather than being stuck and, and then the piston sucking it back in again. And it doesn't take much muck on those seats, sorry, on those seats there to let the water go flying back in again and then you don't get a full pressure. Because what it's doing is this piston is pumping the water down and then because there's no non-return valve to stop it coming back, it's just sucking it back again. So it's pumping it in and sucking it back, pumping it in and sucking it back or partially. So, most of these, you most manufacturers will sell you these non-return valves. Now, unfortunately, most don't come out as easy as this, and most have got little baby clips, like, um, like um, what's the best way of putting it? Basically, these slip down in, and there's little hooks that jam on the side there, so they slip in, and you, you squeeze them past a little ridge, and they're caught. So usually, you have to destroy them to take them out. Sometimes these are the other way up and you can actually see if there's muck stuck in the valve. So they're that way up and you can actually see if there's muck stuck in the valve. Uh, another trick is you can, I mean, what you can do is you can try, you can try, you know, if there's any bits of, I mean, for example, a piece of straw can come up through there and get stuck. That's another thing that can, you know, you can see and deal with it. But there we are, that's one of the common faults there. The other things that can happen are these pistons can jam forward. So they can jam, they can get pushed forward and get stuck at the end of their stroke. So they're right down at the end of the stroke. And then because this is only returned only under spring pressure, there's no way of, of it, you know, if it can't come back under spring pressure, this can't pull it back. So you just it's end up stuck forwards and it's not pumping. So check that these aren't stuck and they are actually running that way. These quite often have a ceramic seal on them. This particular type has some form of rubber seal, but these sometimes have a ceramic seal on them. And if these seals have gone here and all they're doing is, um, actually no, in, in this instance, it's um, the, the push uh, is coming from um, this the seal here. But essentially the same thing is that, is that these seals are replaceable. If these pistons are stuck, that'll stop it working. These seals can get stuck uh, or, or can break down. That's another thing that can do it. And then also, you've got a whole series of little seals here that transfer the water um, actually to you know to the to, to where you need. Um, this one it looks like also has inlet um, non-return valves, which are there so you can get at those you can pick those out and see whether those are causing a problem as well because bear in mind what it what this is, is a pump so it sucks in and blows out and you need a non-return valve at each end there's these which are the ones that are the common issue here 
and then there's the outlet ones which can also cause problems as well. But you can tell, to actually get this deep within the machine, all we've undone is four bolts there, and then this section is held on by two. Now, not you don't necessarily need to take this section off. I only did that for example, so you can see. But what we're saying, what I'm saying is, you can actually go in with just these four bolts, you've got none of this oil pouring out everywhere, and you can actually look and you can see the inlet return valves, the outlet return valves. Actually, is that the right way around? Uh, doesn't matter. Inlet, there's return valves on the inlet and the outlet. You can clean them all out. Um, they're not always easy to get out, and as you can tell by those ones, they're not going to be that easy to get out. But what you can do, if you see, look, see these, all they are is they're just spring-loaded buttons there, and if there's any muck in them, you can actually look and you can see. So yeah, you're not going to get a perfect job, but you could get some of the muck out of that, and at least get yourself going again. Again, you'd destroy them taking them out, but most good manufacturers will sell you those, and those, sorry, those and those, and also these pump washers. There's nothing, there's no timing, there's no, you know, there's no particular drama in taking this front section off. Once you've gone into the gearbox, yes, there's oil going to come out and things like that. I could have turned that the other way up to stop it pouring out, um, but didn't. So there we are. Basically, what we've got, check in on return valve, see if you've got muck in them. If you haven't, and it's still not giving decent pressure, you can come in and check the other non-return valves. You can check your pistons. Um, it depends really, it, it, it depends really sort of how deep into this you want to go. Um, yeah, um, in, in this instance, it looks like, actually, hang on, uh, these are the, the inlet non-return valves, do apologise, these are the inlet non-return valves, and those are the outlet non-return valves. But any one of those will stop it pumping properly, because what it'll do is the piston will be pushing that um, water, it's trying to pump forwards, it'll either be not drawing any fresh into the, into the cylinder, or what it'll be doing is it'll be blowing it back um, down the pipe and into the other pistons. Other things that can happen, the swash plate can come detached because this plate basically rocks as it spins, it rocks and hits each one of these. This can come detached, you can put the screw back in there. To be fair, if the problem with the motor isn't that and you have got power coming into here and the problem isn't that, don't bother trying to fix that because you're really, you're talking rewinding and things like that's not worth doing. Gearbox bits, um, again, not really worth doing, but these things are built fairly heavily, um, usually, and these bits and bobs you can purchase, they are quite cheap, you can purchase and you can replace quite easily. These just push in, that just pushes in, these just sit on top. So there we are folks, I hope that helps. Um, a bit basic I know but you get to see the guts of one of these and a bad one as well like this and uh, to be honest this was actually working even in this state so they can take quite a kicking so don't worry about getting it too perfect um, so yeah there we are guys hope that helps